So the first example we're going to look at uh, for trying to understand connections and curvature is the example of linear systems of ordinary differential equations. As a disclaimer here, I don't study differential equations. I've never really done many courses on them beyond a kind of undergraduate first year thing. So there's definitely not a deep knowledge of ODEs required to understand this thing. To start off, we'll, we'll talk about what is a linear system of ODEs. And a linear system of ODEs is kind of can be phrased as this problem of if we're given a bunch of differential equations in the form of df by dxj is equal to some linear combination of the f, then can we find smooth solutions to these differential equations? Uh, another way of phrasing this could be, can we find a section of a trivial rank R bundle in some sense? And this is the approach we will take to kind of formalize what we mean by connections and curvatures here. So this is the thing that might be in the back of our minds, but we don't really need to worry about it yet. To give an explicit example of what I mean, or half explicit, is if we take n and r to be 2, then a linear system of ODEs is just this. It's a collection of four equations that we want to be satisfied. So here, a, b, c, d, p, q, r, and s are all smooth functions. And we just want to find f1 and f2 such that these things, these four equations are satisfied. First thing we can do is we can use the chain rule, which is dfi is equal to the derivatives times the dxi, and we can rewrite this in a matrix form. This is kind of just a classic, if you have a linear system of equations, writing it in a matrix is always a good idea because then you can start to use matrix techniques. Given this, we can write it really succinctly as d plus omega bar f is equal to zero, where omega bar, or minus omega bar, there's like a sign here, is just exactly this two by two matrix of one forms, so this a dx1 plus c dx2, etc, etc. Just as a definition, we can say that a connection is exactly something that looks like this. It's d plus omega bar, where omega bar is a matrix of one forms. So now let's talk a bit more about solving our linear system of ODEs. Normally you need some kind of boundary constraints to be able to solve a system of ODEs up to, to kind of solve the constants. So for example, if we're given an initial value condition, so we say that, you know, for some point x0, we know what f of x0 should be. Then solving our system of ODEs is exactly the same as finding a section of the trivial rank R bundle with a fixed value at a given point. So this is our initial value condition, such that the section is nabla flat. And what do we mean by that? That just means that nabla of s is 0. So this last thing is just... It's kind of a cheating shortcut. We're just saying, you know, we have wrote down our linear system of ODEs uh, in the last slide as d plus omega bar f equals zero. So saying that something is nabla flat is exactly saying it's a solution to this equation, which is exactly saying it's a solution to our linear system of ODEs. So flat sections of a connection correspond to solutions of an initial value problem. So that's kind of one way of thinking about, or like a good first stepping stone to what is a connection? It's exactly a thing such that sections which are zero under this connection are solutions to an IVP. Now something we note is that we've written our connection is what well, we've defined it to be d plus omega bar. We can apply this repeatedly, you know, like this is just some kind of operator we can apply to f, where f is f1, f2, it's a column vector. We could apply this lots and lots of times. So in particular, we could apply it twice. And we call this operator given by applying the, the connection twice. We call this the curvature of the connection. So one thing to note is that if we have a flat section, that is a section that vanishes under the connection, then the curvature evaluated on this section will be zero as well. So this is just because if nabla of s is zero, then nabla of nabla of s is zero as well. So in particular, this tells us that the curvature of our connection evaluated at our section evaluated at our x0, the point in our initial value thing, should be exactly the curvature of the connection evaluated at v, our initial value. So this gives us a way of thinking about what the curvature of the connection tells us and like why we care about it in the first place and why we think to define it as nabla squared. It's because the curvature corresponds to the obstruction to solving the system given our initial value. That is, we can only solve for initial conditions such that the curvature on that initial vector is zero. So being able to solve a linear system of ODEs for all initial conditions 
is equivalent to the curvature being zero at x zero. Uh, and this is, if this is the case, we say the curvature is flat. So as a, as a side note here, the word flat is very overloaded here, even more so than the word connection in that flat means three or four different things and they're all kind of it's very similar but subtly and importantly different so we'll talk about this a bit later but here being flat a curvature is flat or a connection is flat if its curvature is identically zero one thing we can talk about now is a theorem called the frobenius integrability theorem and this is a theorem that will let us solve linear system of odes so the frobenius integrability theorem what does it say it says if we have a vector bundle and a flat connection on E. So here a flat connection means a connection whose curvature is identically zero. So if we have a vector bundle, a flat connection on E, some point in X, some point in the fiber over this point, so this corresponds to our initial condition, then the Frobenius integrability theorem says that there exists a local section over some neighborhood U of X zero that satisfies the initial value condition, that is S of X zero is V, and is flat for our connection, that is nabla of S is zero. So here, just to recap, we say a connection is flat if it has zero curvature. We say a section is flat if the connection is zero on that section. So note that a flat connection doesn't necessarily imply that every section is flat because flat connection is talking about the curvature, flat section is talking about the connection itself. It's kind of a weird thing. And we say a, a bundle is flat if there exists some connection on it that is flat. Um, so two of these things correspond to the curvature, but flat sections talk about the connection itself. Uh, one thing to note is that we're definitely being analytic here, not algebraic. Um, what do I mean by that? I mean that we're looking at X as something living inside Cn, and we're looking at holomorphic functions on it. We're looking at the normal Cn subspace topology. Uh, the reason I mention this is because algebraic geometers love to study the Zariski topology and rational functions instead of holomorphic functions. And the point is that this theory does not, I mean, there is a, a perfectly functioning theory of connections and curvature in the algebraic setting, but there are some very important differences. So. For example, flat sections of d minus 1 over z on C star, these are logarithms, and these exist locally as holomorphic functions, but they're not rational. So you see there are kind of analytic sections, but not algebraic ones. So this is just you know a warning note that this really is a thing about ordinary differential equations. We're really doing analytic geometry here. So the point is the Frobenius integrability theorem gives us a method for solving linear differential systems. Or equivalently, given what we've just said, it's it's uh, it tells us how to study flat connections. We kind of get given this algorithm. We say, take a basis of the fiber over our initial point, extend these elements of your basis to flat sections, and this is exactly what the Frobenius integrability theorem says we can do locally, and then trivialize your bundle using these sections. Then in this basis, your connection will just be D. That is, because all your sections are flat, nabla will just be equal to d. This is something that isn't completely obvious straight away, that if you have a basis of flat sections, your connection is given by d plus zero, that is your omega bar is zero, but it's something that can be worked out and it's a nice little exercise to do, but it's not like something snappy that I've just put in a slide. So there's something to think about there, but it's true. So in other words, locally, flat connections on a rank R bundle are canonically modeled by trivial connections, that is connections of the form D plus zero, on the trivial rank R bundle. That's what this says. It says that we can take a basis, extend to flat sections, and then in this basis, everything is trivial. We have a trivial rank R bundle because we've trivialized it, and we have the trivial connection. So let's talk now, finally, about something a bit more topological. So if we take some flat rank R bundle, so that means some bundle that admits a connection with zero curvature, we can define a sheaf. We can consider the sheaf of flat sections. And these are just, this sheaf is given by solving D of F is equal to zero. Um, and you can note this is a sheaf because it's the kernel of a sheaf morphism. And this defines a sheaf. 
we just say over each u it's given by solving d of f equals zero and each solution to this will be locally constant because its derivative is zero. So the sheaf of flat sections is a locally constant sheaf. And this is also known as a local system. If we now take a local system, so some locally constant sheaf, then since the uh, differential is a C linear map, we get an induced map of some tensor products here. And this actually lets us realize our local system when we tensor it with holomorphic functions as a flat bundle with a trivial connection. So we have a way of going between flat bundles and local systems. And luckily and wonderfully, this actually induces an, an equivalence of categories. Uh, and it's a special case of the, the so-called Riemann-Hilbert correspondence. And this is actually really surprising because local systems are purely topological things. So a good example of local systems is the orientation sheaf of a surface. Um, they, they really just care about the topological structure. And you can formalize this even more because local systems, you can show that these are in fact parameterized by representations of the fundamental group in CR. Or if your space X is nice enough, then their local systems are parameterized by functors from the fundamental groupoid into set. So these are, they just see the topological structure of X. There's no analytic things in them at all. But the flat bundles are analytic objects. As we've seen, they, they talk about solutions to initial value problems. They care about how the differential acts on sections. You know, there's analytic data in there. So applying this in one dimension, we get something that would otherwise be quite surprising if we didn't know about this equivalence between local systems and flat bundles. It's kind of a classical fact that line bundles are in bijection with h1 of x in Ox. And this obviously, this is Ox here, it's the structure sheaf, it's the sheaf of holomorphic functions. This has analytic data in it. But flat line bundles can be shown to be in bijection with h1 of x c star, where c star here is um, c minus the origin, it's invertible elements. And this is the constant sheaf. And this latter one, this h1 of x in c star, this depends only on the topological structure of X. There's absolutely no analytic data in this at all. This is just the, you can even compute this using the singular cohomology of X in C. And this is kind of surprising that this happens to be true. And this whole story kind of generalizes and it leads to why I care about these kind of things um, because of something called Deleen cohomology. And the idea is that being able to put connections, being able to put curvature on stuff Sometimes this is a topological obstruction to being able to add these things. Sometimes there is an analytic obstruction to being able to add these structures to your sheaves. And it's an interesting thing to study what, which ones are which and what implies what. And it's a lovely story, uh, but it's not something we're going to talk about. This is as far as we're going to go today with linear systems of ordinary differential equations.